Could you remain standing as we read our Gospel? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In those days John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadduc Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from, flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptise you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. John the Baptist is an unusual character, eating locusts and wild honey. We might find an encounter with him a bit off-putting at first. Someone who dresses as he does and who eats locusts and wild honey. Probably not the kind of person you and I could imagine spending an evening with. But this is true of all the great prophetic figures. They make us uncomfortable. They shake us out of our usual way of seeing things. And they force us to confront those parts of ourselves we'd rather push behind the settee and settle back with a good film. And John's message is exactly, repent, turn around, begin again. Like Jesus, John too will be rejected, he'll be persecuted, and he'll eventually be handed over and executed for his courageous defence of truth and justice. Just a bit more about this word repent. It's a Greek word translated into English and it which really means turn your mind around, turn the whole of your thinking around or change. And John's message was that we would look in, at the world and the way we look at things in a totally different way. So we see ourselves and the world in a different way. He wants us to see ourselves 
and the world as they really are, not as the way we imagine or would like them to be. And he wants this for a very good reason. It's because the kingdom of heaven has come near. God is about to come and live among us. He's coming as our Emmanuel. And he's, God is showing us that our human bodies, imperfect as they are, are loved by God where the, to the point where he is happy to share himself with us. And he wants us to see things as he sees them. Later on in his ministry, Jesus will try to really shake up people's vision of reality. He will tell them, among other things, that God is like the father of the prodigal son, running out to welcome him, not hearing his excuses, longing to bring him back, only wanting to celebrate a child's return, loving that child with all his failures and shortcomings, full of joy that the child has come home again. But there's some very clear differences between John and Jesus. John lived as a hermit in the desert. People came out to him. He didn't go to them. Jesus, on the other hand, is a socializer. He mixes with all sorts of people in towns and cities. The good, the bad, the rich and poor, the religious and secular, the Roman centurion, a greedy little tax collector. And he enjoys the hospitality they offer him in their homes. John, though, emphasises that Jesus outranks him completely. He's not even worthy to untie the sandals of Jesus. He is the one who simply is preparing the way for the Messiah, the Saviour King, the Emmanuel. There were two kinds of people coming out to see Jesus, John. There were ordinary people, those people who wanted to start again with God, those people who wanted to have their sins forgiven. And then there were the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the big cheeses of the day, the ones who were important or liked to be thought of as important. And these came out not in sorrow for their wrongdoing, but to test John and see if he observed the law. And John didn't have any time for them, because he saw them just as much in need of repentance and conversion as anyone else. They were not to think that simply because they were descendants of Abraham, their salvation is assured. And it's not our birth or race or religious affiliation, education, social status or financial worth that makes us friends of God, but our awareness of our total dependence on him for everything we need. No one is saved simply by being a law-abiding Jew, as the Pharisees seem to think, any more than being baptised into the Christian Church alone brings salvation. Much more is expected. Jesus later on will say that those who presume they are God's people but their actions don't prove it will give way to the tax collectors and prostitutes that he made friends with because they, having repented and reformed, will go into the kingdom first. And Matthew's not just taking the chance to have a dig and lashing out at some Jewish leaders. Those words of John really are directed at us today. Because there's a Pharisee and a Sadducee in each one of us. And our most dangerous enemy is complacence. I'm okay. I'm a good enough person. 
I'm not perfect, of course, I make mistakes, but I'm okay. I'm not a religious fanatic, but I try and be a good Christian. I'm okay. And where our relationships with God are concerned, if we're standing still, sadly we're really going backwards. I wonder what John the Baptist would say to us if he were here this morning. What would he warn us against? And we're coming to the end of another calendar year, they're not many more days left in 2019 and it's the beginning of the church year. I wonder where we need conversion. I wonder where we need to turn our minds around. I wonder how we can give better witness to the Christian message in these days in Britain. And I wonder as we journey through this season of Advent, how can we grow and change in our Christian lives? Maybe most of us are well into preparations for Christmas, the invitations have gone out, the planning is well underway. But I wonder what preparation we've made for the year that is ahead. Will Jesus really be part of my life each day, every day? Will he be really entering our lives at a special way this Advent? Are we making time to listen to him and making our hearts still? Are his concerns our concerns? Namely that I desire to live a life of service to others. I work with others to build a fairer, kinder society. Peace and justice on earth to those who are God's friends needs not to become just the song of the angels, but a program for us every day, each day. And on a personal level, each day, we need to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So may God give us grace to welcome, at first, the unwelcome prophets, like John the Baptist, into our lives. Amen.